his tea. Well, the first thing you know, old Jed's a millionaire. The kin folks said, Jed, move away from there. Said, California is the place you ought to be. So they loaded up the truck and they moved to Beverly Hills, that is, swimming pools, movie stars. The Beverly Hillbilly. <laughs> You gonna teach him to wash regular sized dishes? Well, of course I am. Then I won't have to do them. If you can learn him to wash cars, we can make some money. <laughs> now, youngins, you're gonna be walking on eggs today, because Granny is in one of her What incarnation is well, I'm learning this here raccoon to wash dishes. Get him out of here, Ellie. Of all days not to rattle up Granny, this is it. Granny might like to have herself a dishwashing critter. Granny ain't in no mood to like nothing today. She's in one of her cantankerous moods, and she's swarming for a fight. Now, Ellie may get him outside. Oh, sorry, Clyde. Oh, wait a minute, here she comes. Get him out of sight. Oh, where are my hands? Wait a minute here, Ellie, it's in. Oh, we will kill him, I'll sneak you outside. Now, everybody mind your own business. Be real quiet, don't give her nothing to start a scrap about. stalks of cotton just so she could scrap with a bow weevil. <laughs> Howdy. Oh, just a minute, I'll ask. Hey, is Granny cooking lye soap? Yeah, why? Uh, yes, ma'am, that's what she smell. <laughs> <laughs> yes, ma'am, now you do that. And bye. <laughs> that's gonna get the fighting out of Granny's system. What is it? Who was that? Well, that was Mrs. Drysdale. She says that she's gonna throw Granny's soap kettle into the cement pond. Let's go watch it fun, Ellie. Now, hold on. <laughs> you young and stay here. I'll go see if I can hit her off. Get that vile mess out of here. Well, Miss Drysdale. What was that you said again, honey? <laughs> Get that vile mess out of here. I thought that's what you said. <laughs> Don't stand there making that ridiculous noise. Do as I tell you or I'll dump it in the pool and you after it. Keep talking, honey. I want you to have a full head of steam when I tap the avoider. <laughs> Mrs. Drysdale. She's mine, Jed. All mine. Leave her be. Yeah, Granny, you don't want to fight her with your sweater on, do you? No, let me take it off. <laughs> what are you doing? Unhand me, you ruffian. Bring her back, you promised. <laughs> Money-grubbing peasant. <laughs> I refuse to recognize my employer by that odious appellation. Oh, oh everybody is against me. I have to find. 
flying alone to save Beverly Hills from the blight of those barbarians. Where is Milburn? Mr. Drysdale is flying to San Francisco. He, he tried to call you, but you were next door at the Clampers. Yes, being abused, humiliated, and manhandled. Manhandled? By whom? Mr. Clampett. He grabbed me in the most savage manner and literally dragged me like a caveman. <laughs> My arms still ache from his brutal assault. <laughs> Mrs. Drysdale, Mr. Clampett may be rough in appearance, but he's the very essence of a gentleman, the soul of chivalry. He is the essence of uncouth behavior and the soul of depravity. <laughs> Did you hear what happened at his studio when an overzealous actress threw herself at him? I certainly did not. But it all sounds terribly sordid. I hadn't. <laughs> well, he found out that she was a married woman. And his sense of honor is so great that he refuses to go near his own studio so long as she's there. Hmm. Really? Uh, Miss Hathaway, I've been quite shaken by my ordeal. Uh, might I have some tea? Of course. Sit down. I'll prepare it immediately. <laughs> Marie, please see that my new Paris creation is pressed and summon my beautician and masseurs. Oh, and Marie, I want to borrow some of that perfume that you find so devastatingly irresistible to men. No, it is not for Mr. Drysdale. I'm going to throw myself at Mr. Clancy. <laughs> what? Of course I'm able to drive home myself. <laughs> She never even got good and wet for her, got her out of that pond. Oh, come on, Pa. She's about to breathe her life. Your granny's just trying to get back at me for spoiling her scrap with Ms. Drysdale. Ellie! You hear that, Pa? She's terrible sick. She says her time has come and she wants her family around when she goes. Yes, Ralph! Hurry, Pa, hurry! Wait, guys! <laughs> Ellie, ain't your Pa coming? I'm right here, Granny. If he gets here too late, give him a dying message for me. I'm right here. Tell him I forgive him for taking Miss Drysdale's side again me. I didn't do that. Tell him I forgive him for tying my arms down and throwing me in the cement pond to drown. Granny, you fell in. I pulled you out. Tell him he got his wish. I died from a broken heart. I thought it was double pneumonia. Tell him don't waste no money on a pine box. Just throw together some scrap wood and dump me in. <laughs> Granny, don't say those things. Careful, Ellie, you'll catch pond water poison. Besides, I got to measure your granny for her box. I see now, uh, we got a couple of old egg crates down in the basement. Heard you made it. Uh-oh, no. Nope. Free not. Ellie? Reckon your granny didn't mind getting put away kind of doubled up. Granny, <laughs> don't let them do it. It's all right, child. I'm too weak to hear it. I'm breathing my last feeble breath. Uncle Jed! Guess who's downstairs waiting for you? All gussied up and sweet smelling, too. Mrs. Drysdale. Who? Mrs. Drysdale? Why not? That old stone ain't in the Way back down. You're dying. I'm dying to build her one like me. Hold her down, youngin. Steady, Mac. It's steady. have to do is flirt with him. I'm sure it's worth that to get him to move. But suppose he doesn't retreat from your advances. What? Oh, rubbish. If he retreated from a glamorous movie actress, he'll surely retreat from me. You're playing with dynamite. Listen, to get these peasants to move, I danced the Watusi with a keg of nitroglycerin. What are you talking to, Miss Dredge? Oh, Mr. Clampett. I, uh, suppose you think it terribly bold and daring of me to come over here alone like this? Oh, no, not at all. Granny's safe up in her bedroom and the young'uns is up there watching. It isn't Granny I'm afraid of. It's myself, my feelings, the emotions that are raging inside of me. Oh, forget it, Mrs. Dreadsdale. Even if you was to tangle with Granny, you couldn't hurt her. She's little, but she's wiry. I have no intention of tangling with Granny. The only entanglement I fear is you and me. Well, I wouldn't hurt you for the world. That's the way you Granny. You go down and Miss Drysdale. Oh, I'm sailing away again. I'm breathing my last. Ellie Ray, quick. Run down and fetch my tonic. Maybe I can hang on a mite longer. Is it Granny? Oh, oh, yes, Ro. Open them doors so I can see the sky and the trees when I go. Where are you going? <laughs> Fixing to cross the river, Jordan. 
In your night clothes? <laughs> I'm leaving this veil of tears. I'm going to join the angels. Well, they've done better than Dodgers. <laughs> I'm dying, you big mama. <laughs> no, you ain't, Granny. You'll feel fine just as soon as Ellie fetches your tonic for you. She'll get the wrong bottle. <laughs> She ain't smart like you, Jethro. <laughs> Shucks, she ain't had education like me. <laughs> I should have sent you. You'd have got the right bottle, because you're smart. That's true. <laughs> Hurry, stop Ellie from getting the wrong bottle. Okay. Hey, wait a minute. <laughs> Whilst I'm gone, who's to stop you from going downstairs and whopping Mrs. Drysdale? Well, a smart boy like you knows how to stop me from doing that, Jethro. I do? <laughs> I'll be out there listening to hear you turn that key. You're the smart one, Jethro. <laughs> Did you hear that? Yes, ma'am. <laughs> now then, Mrs. Drysdale. <laughs> I was right. I just figured out if you could lock that door from the inside, you could unlock it, too. <laughs> you and your education. <laughs> Let me out of here. Let me out of here. Come on, Granny. You're going back to bed. <laughs> Guess what it is I've been trying to tell you? Oh, ma'am. Can't you tell just by looking at me? <laughs> Great night. Then I must tell you, this burden is more than I can carry alone. It weighs too heavily on me. I can hide it no longer. I'm infatuated. Well, shucks, ma'am, if that's all that's been bothering you, forget it. You're just pleasingly plump. <laughs> could, could we sit down? You betcha. That's the ticket. There you are. Oh, don't let go, please. Oh, Miss Drysdale, don't worry. This bench will hold your weight and then some. <laughs> there, you see? Now I'll just drag up this chair. Oh, can't you uh, sit here beside me? Of course. You don't take up more than half. <laughs> there. Now you feel better? I'd feel much better if you could put your arm around me. Miss Drysdale. I could put my arm around you and have half of it left over. You've got to stop worrying about being fat. Hey, you city women fret more about extra pound here and there. Mr. Grant, uh, uh, Jed, I've been trying to tell you something in a subtle manner, and I'm getting nowhere with it. Very well. I'll show you how I feel. Now, do you know what I've been talking about? I do for a fact. You're plumb shutting off the blood to my leg. <laughs> Please come down and cook some vittles. I'm starving. Hey, look here. I done took three hitches in my rope. I told you. I ain't stirring out of this chair until your Uncle Jed comes in here and answers me some questions. Like what, Granny? Like the hanky-panky that's going on betwixt you and Ms. Drysdale. And Jethro leaves the room. Oh, Granny. I don't know what hanky-panky you're talking about. And Jethro, stay here. Thank you, Uncle Jed. I am talking about the hanky-panky that went on downstairs and I had to be locked in upstairs not to see and Jethro leave the room. Oh, Granny, you was locked in upstairs so you wouldn't go downstairs and whomp that poor woman and Jethro stay here. Thank you. Then why did she come to see you all gustied up and smelling a perfume and Jethro leave the room? Oh, Granny. Granny, will come here to unburden her mind to me about something and Jethro, leave the room. Thank you. Leave? Leave? I ain't even sure I ought to tell Granny about Miss Drysdale's problem, but I know she'll pester me till I do. I'll pester you, too. Ow! 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 Like a little kid that doesn't know to score. I done graduated the sixth grade! Now, Jed, what's Miss Drysdale's problem? Well, Granny, she thinks she's a mite overweight. A mite overweight? To tell me that you sent Jethro out of the room? Well, you know him and his big mouth. And to tell you that? Miss Drysdale got dressed to the nines and pickled in perfume. Yeah, that's the truth, Granny. Who do you think you're greening, Jed? Has that woman took a shine to you? Granny. Don't you granny me. I remember you when you was the lady killer of Cass County. <laughs> granny, that was 25 years ago. It was only two days ago that that movie actress told herself at you. You had it then and you got it now. And I want to know what you're doing with it. <laughs> Miss Drysdale's waiting downstairs to see you again, and smelling sweeter than ever, too. <laughs> Nothing but twitched you, huh? 
Well, if you won't talk, I'll wring it out of her. Grab her, Jethro. <laughs> what do you want me to do with it? You can rock a chair until I get back. <laughs> <laughs> I'm through with hints and subtleties. I must tell you how I feel. Jethro, <laughs> you're much too smart to waste your time holding me like this. I am? <laughs> of course. A smart boy like you would figure out how to tie me in this chair with a piece of rope. Well, I ain't got no rope. Smart boy like you would figure out how to use that rope around your waist. Well, yeah, I could do that. You're so much smarter than Ellie May, it ain't even close. <laughs> Shucks, she ain't had education like me. <laughs> See you later, please. <laughs> Stand back, Miss Dean, for your own safety. What do you mean? Something I thought was buried 25 years ago in Cass County has showed up to haunt me. <laughs> Mr. Clavin. Please, please, I can't go through all that again. First that movie actress, then Miss Drysdale, now you. <laughs> Wait a minute. Suppose you sit down and tell me everything. Yeah, I reckon I better. It's weighing on me something awful. <laughs> You best go home before Dad gets back. Oh, but I want to help. I'm so grateful to you for moving back to the hills and taking temptation out of my reach. <laughs> Bring your loaded, Uncle Jed. How many critters can you take with me, Pop? Oh, round up as many as can hang on safe. Well, come here, Jeff, huh? Oh, Jed, you're back. This is pretty near everything. Yep. Better have a last look around, Granny. Well, I guess this is it, uh, Jed. Sure is. Uh, hop on, Maggie. Maggie? Is that one of L.A. May's little critters? No, oh, ma'am. Maggie is all mine. You mean me? Sure do, honey bun. Get in the front seat so we can snuggle. It's a long ride back to my cabin. Your cabin? Well, now, you didn't think I was going to leave you here, sweetie pie. You being crazy mad for me and all. Now, wait a minute. You love it back in Cares County, darling. You can eat all you want. We'd be happy as two hogs in a mud baller. <laughs> What's the matter, sweetheart? Don't call me that. <laughs> I thought 25 years was too long. Well, now it's time to say goodbye to Jed and all his kin. They would like to thank you folks for kindly dropping in. You're all invited back next week to this locality to have a heaping helping of their hospitality. Hillbilly, that is. Set a spell. Take your shoes.